So, March is Endometriosis Awareness Month. So, endometriosis is when women, let me just say, when you get your periods, about 99% of women have what we call retrograde menstruation. All retrograde menstruation, it means as the menstrual blood is coming out through the cervix into the vagina, some of the blood falls back through the tubes and it lies down in the pelvis. But about 33% or so of women, that blood remains there and it causes what we call endometriosis. So what really causes endometriosis? We really do not know, but it's a combination of things. If there is a genetic predisposition to endometriosis, and in some women, you might find that when there is some structural abnormalities within the uterus, where there's an obstruction, so the menstrual blood is not coming out, so it flows back into the pelvis, and some of it seeps in through the myometrial wall, that is the uterine wall itself, and it actually causes problems there. Now, how do you know when you have endometriosis? The one thing that we are advocating now is menstruation pain is not normal. So most people grew up being told that, yes, if period pains are normal. So when you've got period pains, and especially if they are worsening, that's one of the red flags for endometriosis. The other thing that um, we need to take note of is that at times endometriosis symptoms can be very vague. You get bloatedness, you've got symptoms that res resemble any abdominal pains or any GIT problems, that is gastrointestinal problems. That could be endometriosis. For those people that are already sexual active, pain during intercourse it's one of the signs that you could be having endometriosis. But for some women, they get told by their doctors when they take them to theater for one thing or the, or the other that actually you have endometriosis. So that's what those women that have got mild endometriosis. So why do we worry about endometriosis? We worry about endometriosis because it does affect the womb and it does interfere with the chances of falling pregnant later on. If we can just look here, it just shows the areas where you can have endometriosis. It's mainly, it can happen in the pelvis, but you can have it in the wall of the womb, which we call adenomyosis when it's there. And then it can affect the ovary itself, where the eggs are contained, and then it can also affect the cube, that is the fallopian cube. And when it affects the fallopian cube, it does causes distortion with um, falling pregnant. So you might find that women are unable to fall pregnant because the cube and the ovary cannot are not positioned nicely. And one of the things that we know is associated with endometriosis and fertility is that it affects the quality of the eggs. So how do we treat this? You've been told or you suspect you have endometriosis. How do we treat this? Various ways, one for pain, we will give you anti-inflammatories to control the pain. But in the long run, we often say that uh, you need to take Dinotrex. Dinotrex is available in, in the form of a pill and you can have it as Visen or as Clara for some women. Then for other people, we actually would like to put in a Mirena. Mirena is a medicated loop. So for the young girls, we have um, a medicated loop called Kylina. It's got a smaller frame than the Mirena. So we will insert it. It can be inserted in the rooms. They will insert it and then it stays in the uterus for five years from the Mirena and then the Kylene, it stays in for three years. Then you need to change it every three years. Now, for some people that cannot afford uh, private care, they can still use their home for as long as they're not menstruating, then the chances of new endometriosis developing are lessened. However, the one that's already there the only way to try and remove endometric spot is, you, is to do surgery.